horizontal asymptotes, you can just look at the ratio of the leading highest power terms. Because what you're looking for when you do when you look for horizontal asymptotes is what's the limit as you approach infinity? If you're looking for vertical asymptotes, you're looking for specific values, and they're going to occur where this is zero, the denominator. The, where, vertical asymptotes, you look for where the denominator is zero. Because when the denominator is zero, you have really big number divided by zero, or even some number divided by zero. The smaller the bottom number gets, right? The, the closer this gets to zero, again, whatever number of uh, cookies you have, and you have tiny little amount of people, right? Even if this was 100 cookies, but divided by 0 0.00001 person, that's that's a lot of cookies per whole person, right? I don't know how you have this fraction of a person, but you do. If you have 100 cookies per every millionth of a person, you have a lot of cookies per person. If you look for vertical asymptotes by looking for where the denominator is zero in a rational function like that. Right? When you have x plus 1 or x minus 2, it's going to have a vertical asymptote at, um, it's going to have a vertical asymptote at what? Vertical asymptote is x equals 2. What about its horizontal asymptote? You can tell now with your newfound knowledge, looking for horizontal asymptotes that you couldn't do in grade 11, right? It's hard to discuss, does this have a horizontal asymptote and what is it in grade 11? Because we don't know anything about limits. But now you can look at it and say, I know what's going to happen to this. What happens to that as you uh, go infinitely one way or the other? Are these significant? No. no, right? If you're looking for what happens as you make it bigger and bigger, you just look at the biggest terms, the highest power terms. If it's x over x, what's that going to be? One. So it's going to be it's going to level off at y equals one. If you look at that function, that's what's going to happen. The vertical, the horizontal asymptote is going to be one. It'll level off at one, right? Just because it's it's totally logical, right? If you pick a big number here over a big number, same big number, right? Um, it's going to divide to basically one, right? Because these are totally insignificant. Then, are we okay? So realize how you find those differently, right? Maybe make a note of it. Vertical asymptotes for rational functions, look at where the denominator is zero. Look for the non-permissible values. Horizontal asymptotes, you look at end behavior. Okay? Vertical asymptotes. Look for, I don't know. If we put down NPVs, is that okay? Where denominator is zero? Horizontal asymptotes, you need to look at end behavior. Horizontal asymptotes, look at end behavior. And end behavior, look at the ratio of leading terms. Ratio of leading terms. Okay, so that's... I mean, there's a lot to it, obviously, more than just writing it like that. But that's the kind of a summary of it, right? All right, believe it or not, <laughs> that's a, just saying this is the end. Uh, believe it or not, this is the end of that section. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It is. I, I, I realize I should have split that into about 2.2a, 2.2b, or something, or make it numbered sections. Well, because it's kind of depressing. Okay, we've spent four days and we've done one section, right? So depends. It's all related. That's why I put it in that section together.